Remember this, it's called an arts festival. Isn't it beautiful? After a COVID hiatus, Adelaide's AusAsia Festival is back. For punters, that means you can take your pick from music, arts, food and dance, all with a focus on Asia. And for performers like me, it means the first time in a long time that we've been able to perform for a live audience. I've been in quarantine in Adelaide for two weeks after arriving from a lockdown Sydney. So this is my first foray back into a world with other people. And to be honest, I'm finding it a little overwhelming. But first stop is a chat with AusAsia's artistic director, Annette Shunwar. This is Shun War's first festival as artistic director. Hello and welcome to Studio 22. I'm Annette Shun War. You might know her from her various TV, radio and film projects over the years. But behind the scenes, she's been integral in developing and platforming Asian Australian theatre makers and performers, especially through CARP, Contemporary Asian Australian Performance. She's now at the helm of AusAsia Festival and also making history, incredibly, as the first Asian Australian to ever lead the festival. How does that feel? It feels like, well, it's about time. <laughs> no, it feels great. It feels really fantastic. One of the things about this festival, it's been a great showcase for work from Asia, but not of work from within Australia. And I think that that's been the missing link in its programming. So it was a great opportunity for me to step in and just see how that would go. And the interesting thing with working with Asian Australian artists is that they can take a topic that might be particular to their culture, but seeing it from a contemporary Australian perspective, which they might not be able to do, or might not actually be able to discern if they were still in the home country. And one of the artists responding to stories passed down over generations is festival designer Truk Trong. These sewn and dyed fabrics allude to the gold tunic worn by a third century Vietnamese warrior, Lady Tru, who at the age of 19 led thousands into battle against an occupying Chinese dynasty. She was a normal 19-year-old Vietnamese girl, but um, throughout history, they described her in this really funny way. So they describe her as three metres tall. She's apparently breasts one metre long, so long that through war, she had to tie them up and kind of fling them behind her back. Because China was ruling, um, there was a really strong sense of Confucianism that came along with that. And the belief was that men are, are better than women. And so they said, let's change her into a goddess, a mythical creature. That's the only way people believe that a female could actually win war or lead a war. I doubt she had boobs that were, you know, they flung over her back and that were one metre long. I think it just stuck with me because the story of women and how powerful they actually are was quite different. As a festival that engages with Asia's diverse cultures, history and politics, this year, AusAsia found itself in news headlines. During the festival, AusAsia was accused of censorship by the Hong Kong Cultural Association of South Australia, who were booked to host a workshop and performance in the Lucky Dumpling Market. The group wanted to include yellow umbrellas, an item also used by pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong. We always use yellow umbrella as our decoration and as our pop. I think they view it as a political tool rather than us. The Cultural Association say AusAsia requested they scrap plans to use the umbrellas because of its political symbolism. They reluctantly agreed and removed the umbrellas. Later, AusAsia cancelled their performance and workshop, citing COVID concerns. What's your response to that and to the idea that there might be censorship in AusAsia? They were not uh, cancelled for that reason. And in fact, we had to cancel six workshops, uh, partly because of COVID, because of the difficulty of servicing the Moon Lantern Trail and Lucky Dumpling. We had so many people that we just couldn't manage it logistically. We are not at all interested in any kind of censorship. Uh, and in fact, you know, the very things that that uh, organisation 
were interested in is you know in the heart of our ticketed program that is where we want to talk about and we encourage artists to talk about all the issues that are of concern the community program which is for families and for children that's not the place to have you know overtly religious or political material it's about being inclusive AusAsia is partly funded by the Hong Kong government's economic and trade office based in Sydney with Beijing continuing to encroach on Hong Kong's independence, AusAsia's decision to cancel the event raises questions. So are you claiming that there was pressure from the Chinese government not to have this performance go ahead? Personally, I feel that there is a pressure because we are not convinced that it is due to COVID. Do you feel any pressure to present an image of Asia that ignores those political complexities? For example, when it comes to China's relationship with Hong Kong or Australia's relationship with China? It's an arts festival. Uh, so our job is to present what the artists are exploring and finding important to say. Of course artists are political and that's what makes their work more important and resonates with everyone. So we want all points of view. But there are so many other issues as well in the region and in our short program, you know, we're trying to address what is happening in India, with women in, in the whole region, with climate change. There's so many issues to talk about. We can't cover all of them. While some artists are talking politics, Others are coming together over the mutual weirdness of our lives since COVID. After meeting at AusAsia in 2018, Adelaide's Alison Curry and Japan's Yui Kawaguchi have collaborated digitally to create the dance work Somewhere, Everywhere, Nowhere. Really this idea of connection and disconnection uh, is quite prominent in the work. A lot of the connection that we have had over the past three years has been um, online. Just online chatting, then uh, yeah, first time after two weeks of quarantine, then I met Alison. Wow, she is here. <laughs> <laughs> By unravelling a chandelier made of fibre optic cabling, Alison and Yui riff on our digital proximity in an increasingly polarised world. In this COVID time, everything is so unclear, unsure, but there is some feeling which you cannot really describe or you cannot touch mm. or there is no word, but we can make it somehow visible. It's like um, make the ghost visible. <laughs> yeah. It's not medicine, but I feel this is our, our, our house of responsibility. There's no other annual festival that is totally focused on that engagement between Asia and Australia. This is where we are. We all know that diplomatic relations have been strained over the last little while, but really whatever happens at that level, underneath that level there are relations, there are person-to-person -person connections, and if we maintain relationships and understanding and appreciation of one another, that's the thing that's going to help us get through. Thank you.